So part of this exercise has been getting to know the people at, at UT, UCT who make use of REDCap, and that, that's been a really great, a really great opportunity. Seeing the the e-research program and their their fervent desire to have shared resources distributed across research groups at, on on campus has been a really great experience. Um, so I I met Anami through this this process, and I'm really looking forward to hearing how uh, REDCap's been deployed at their site and what kind of uh, what kind of roles they they see it filling in the future. So uh, with that said, I will hand over the mic. Uh, don't worry about the subscription business. Yeah. Okay, hi, um, I'm Anami, and uh, like Prof. Fay, I also fell into becoming the data person around the office. Um, it's not something you really aspire to when you're um, in high school. <laughs> <laughs> we all know it happens <laughs> in real life. Um, so um, at the moment I'm at the Clinical Research Center, which is um, at UCT, that's a center that serves the, the Faculty of Health Sciences, and we, we provide a lot of support to investigator-led studies that don't have a lot of money, but we also run um, pharmaceutical studies. Um, we've got a trial center there where we do clinical trials. Um, I just want to tell you guys briefly about how to working at uh, UCT. So what happened is, um, like here, people had their own instances running on their own servers, but then you need a profound space in each department in order to maintain that stuff, um, which was just becoming a bit crazy. And also some of our researchers end up using other people's instances at you know other universities just because we didn't have our own one. And then finally, Thanks to the EU research team, we've got our own um, red cap. But we only we only got it last year, so we're still learning about how to manage all of this. Um, so what, what we've got at the moment, um, we're running this, the standard version of red cap, um, and then we've actually got two instances on two different <coughs> servers, right? Just asking the IT guy to confirm what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, so the one we use for training and development, and there are like loads of projects on there, and there are loads of users. So basically, anyone with a UCT number and a password can log into that instance, play around with RedCap, design their own forms, see what they can do. And then we've got a separate instance for live projects. So we're keeping track of those. So we um, like actually collecting some of their details, making sure they have got ethics approvals all of that stuff before we put them in production. So now that we can export the whole thing as an XML, that really helps because people can now develop everything they want to develop on the training development instance. We export the entire thing as an XML file, we upload it on the production server, and we're good to go. Um, so obviously the two have to run on the same um, versions and that sort of thing so that people have the same functionality on, on both versions. And we're really excited that you know new features get rolled out so so quickly. Um, so there's lots of features that the UCT people probably don't even know about yet because we only recently moved to this version. Okay. So how we work at the moment. So. We've got the e-research team, which is part of ICTS at um, UCT, right? And they manage the system as a whole. Like, if it needs to be upgraded or whatever, they'll take care of that stuff, right? Or if we find a problem somewhere, like with our firewall, it's not allowing red cap to go through from outside or whatever, then they can help us with that stuff. Okay. And then we've got a, a group of super users, which includes some of the e-research people, who act as the admins for the system. So they're the people that the users will send um, token requests to. Um, and, and some of us are not IT people, okay, but we act as we, we take that role um, to take the burden off the actual IT people. Um, if people have questions, we've got an email address. With they can send, and we can all see that email, and we can respond to them. And then um, at the Clinical Research Center, um, 
we've got a data team and we, in general, our mandate is to support clinical research in the faculty. And so we've also taken on REDCAP as part of our um, portfolio. And we do um, training workshops for end users. So for those people who are new to REDCAP, you'll know that choosing REDCAP is actually choosing a journey of self-learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm trying to get people to understand that. But we also do workshops because we find that a lot of people learn best if you just kickstart them. If you just show them that it's not as intimidating as they think to learn something new and then they'll actually continue learning on their own after that. So we do a lot of introductory type of workshops. And then the other thing that we do is we have a data managers forum which we run where we try to get together all of um, people working in the field, share ideas, talk about what's new um, in all of the systems including REDCAP. Um, and share best practices, that sort of thing. Um, then, how it's being used at the moment. At UCT, there's pretty much everything going on. We've got people doing clinical trials with drugs, with medical devices. We've got um, registries, cohort studies, which will go on for a long time. Uh, labs have started using it, um, although they would really like some of the functionality that Prof. on Display has done. Um, they are managing, you know, to use it for that as well. Um, we've, some people are doing program evaluations, so they're using it for that. I and mean, then um, a lot of people are starting to use it for patient management. Whereas there's not a there's not a defined number of visits, um, you know, following them up for a defined time period, you know, so it's meant to like go on and on and on. Um, and obviously, RedCap wasn't originally designed for that, so it's, I mean, it's a work in progress, right? So one of the things that the, uh, those particular kinds of users are quite interested in is a better way of um, searching for your patient. If they're in a clinical trial, you have a subject number. And when that person walks in the door, everybody on the team knows what their subject number is, and they can find them quite easily. Whereas if you're working in, in Khrutuskin Hospital and the patient comes in, and the only thing you have is their folder number, um, you're gonna have a bit more trouble finding the patient. Or the only thing you have is their surname, um, you're gonna have a bit more trouble finding your actual patient. So, yeah. But we'll get there. Um, and then obviously the survey. So that was one of the more fun things um, for me was to get rid of Survey Monkey <laughs> <laughs> and Google Forms. I some people still design their confidential patient surveys in Google Forms. Not okay. By the way, <laughs> we take those and we're like, can we please just redo them for you in red cap? And I promise you, you can go on exactly as you were, but your data will be safer. It will be stored on a UCT server. It won't be stored somewhere all over the world. Okay. So that's how we've been going at it. Um, we've been asking people also for those Excel spreadsheets please give them to us <laughs> and let's rather, you know, let me show you how easy it is to do it in RedCap, you know, and if you want an Excel spreadsheet, you could have that at the end, you know, I'll give it back to you as an Excel spreadsheet, you can download it as an Excel spreadsheet, because we all know the doctors, they love their Excel spreadsheets, right? I don't know, if I, maybe they teach them that in first year med, med school or something, but by the time they graduate, they are so so into their spreadsheets that it's really hard to convince them otherwise, but RedCap is the one tool where we've managed just to show them how easy it is and that it can be as easy or sometimes easier than designing um, a proper spreadsheet. So we are getting there. Um, on our production side, like full live studies, we've got 24 listed that are actually capturing real data. Um, and we're, yeah, like we're only up for about a year now, so that's pretty good. We're pretty chuffed with that. Um, yeah, we're not counting on the other instance at the moment because there's just everybody locking in and trying new things. And my project list is like 
50 things in it already. <laughs> so that's um, how we do it. And I just want to mention, uh, for those of you who are in Cape Town, um, who stay around, you're very welcome to join our Data Managers Forum. Um, it's not a UCT thing. It's, it's for anyone um, interested in data management. And we can share best practices um, across uh, institutions as well, which would be great. So if you are around, um, we meet about every other month and um, share ideas, collaborate. Um, and we also support and mentor those people who are new to the role. Like I say, there's no, um, no one who decides, I want to be a data person when I grow up. So we're all sort of finding our feet. And, and most of us are self-taught. So we welcome new people to also join us. And, and let's learn from each other. You know. yeah, so we usually give people coffee and biscuits. So if you, come, if you do come all the way to the forum, we'll at least give you biscuits. And that's our, that's our site if you want to check it out. Um, what day of the week is it usually held on? Usually on Tuesdays. And we usually do it in the afternoon. I would never. We usually do it like 3 o'clock so that people can like have a day in the office and then come. Um, so yeah, so that's what we do. And I would just like to say thank you to Paul Harris and Prof. Uh, Dave Tab for making this happen. We were really excited. Obviously, we would all love to have also gone to bits, but air fair. Um, <laughs> For one person instead of 50. So thank you so much for making it happen. Um, and then uh, we'd like to say thank you to the ECTE research team because without them we would never have this. We would still each one be running their own little thing on their own little de um, desktop computer, <coughs> have their own thing under the desk, their server. Um, and then all of the UCT Red Cap admins. Um, Chris and Tom were from ED Research, and then Chairman Gray works with me at the, at the CRC, and then Mamana, who isn't here today, who's from the H3A Bionet, so I don't know if some of you guys might know. And then Leslie Workman from Red Cross, who also could be here. Thank you so much. Um, Paul, any feedback for uh, the uh, first year, oh, a, a user who's one, one year into uh, the REDCap experiment? Yeah, just a um, little bit of feedback and then uh, kind of question as well. But the feedback would be, I, I think I think you're focusing on just the right things. I've uh, I've seen and watched universities that, that adopt REDCap and do nothing, mm -hmm. and I've seen groups that go immediately viral, and I've seen groups that um, that sort of do nothing for a while and then then they go viral. The Mayo Clinic is good example of that one. Uh, when I saw the hockey stick at Mayo Clinic, I, I asked, you know, what, what, what's different? And it was the training. So, so setting up some sort of a workshop, I think, is a brilliant idea. We do, uh, we at Vanderbilt do one sort of 101 workshop a month, just for the purpose that you mentioned that, uh, you know, that, that people just kind of need a little bit of a nudge. We also have a 201 uh, session every week. I don't think you'd need that at, at your volume, but our 201 session is meant for folks that are, you know, kind of getting in. They already know REDCap, but they're on a really kind of a difficult project, and you could set it up this way or that way. You know, sometimes the answer is think about setting up two REDCap databases to, to, to support an individual project. But we've got this set of ninjas, and rather than having them meet every with every group, yeah. just have, just come here on Wednesdays and. We don't give biscuits, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I, maybe, I think we give cookies. I don't, I don't know what the difference is. But, uh, but, but anyway, you know, I think having that, what we found is that people will come. You know, they get the answers. It saves us bandwidth. And what we've also found is that, that the really power users, they'll come even if they don't have a problem sometimes. Yeah. Because, you know, it's just a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, I want to be a ninja. So kudos <laughs> to you. My, my question would be, what, what kind of things are you picking up on the research forum? Uh, you know that that's an interesting concept, and, and basically, I think what I'm hearing there is is it's, it's a, it, is this the is the come here once every couple of months the research form, or do you have an email list or? Um, well, we have a list. Yes. Um, and then we send out invites for a um, forum where we actually physically meet. Right. Um, every other month. About. But it's not it's not only about it's about data management in general. So obviously, we talk a lot about red cap. Everyone in UCT is very excited about Red Cap at the moment. Um, but I 
mean, we also have open clinic now, which we use for some things. So some people are using that. We can talk, you know, we talk about that as well. Um, so the things that we're picking up on is um, like things that happen with the app, or you know, and then we'll either run back to the e-research guys and ask them about it, or if they also don't know, they'll contact uh, yeah. the developing group and see what they can find out for us. Um, if it's a user problem, then I will either recommend them come to one of the workshops, or if it's like a really particular problem, I'll just, um, from the data team at the CRC, we'll try to help them right there. Yeah. And see what Great. So, so just one more observation. I think you're one of those groups that's going to go viral. And don't be scared yeah, of that. It'll, it'll be okay. As long as, no, as long as you get the training module right and you're, you, know, you really can support a lot of users mm. or with, with not a lot of support. So yeah. I, I think you're doing yeah. everything and right. I mean, the, the training videos inside RedCap are so good that actually my workshop mainly consists now of sitting people down in the room and watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> And then let's do an exercise and troubleshoot and ask questions. You see, instead of me teaching the same thing that someone is teaching on the video. So it's actually quite reproducible. And I would be very happy to share with, with, with whoever um, uh, needs to set up something like that. So we've, we've sort of divided it into uh, RedCap for data capturers and then RedCap for designers. So right. people have to design the forms. And then RedCap for data managers. So people have to do the quality control and export the data and all of that. So, you know, people attend whichever session is relevant to their role. So, so related, and I promise this is the last one I'll point out, but, but that reminded me, I meant to tell you earlier that we also have a Coursera MOOC yeah, yeah. That, that's available at no yeah. cost. And so, you know, it's really around best practices, but we use red cap exercises. As an example. So feel free. Yeah, which is so great. Yeah, we've, we've discovered push that them there. Okay. Uh, Coursera and the, yeah, just Coursera Google. Google. Are you the solo, uh, no, solo teacher? Stephanie Duda. Ah, Stephanie, yes, of course. And I are collaborating on this. So. Okay, and that's available at Coursera.org. Yeah, just do uh, Google Coursera and data management. It's, Great. it's easy to find. Yeah. Like the word course with RA stuck on it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, Great. Coursera. That's a, All right, we should have some questions, yes. Team, but I was just wondering, since we're looking at growing and in, in, uh, expanding, is there any kind of plans to have a go-to person or group of people if we want to look at uh, designing specific plugins and things like programmers somewhere on that team or not yet? Is it something? Um, this is something that maybe Ashley can speak to. But ICTS in general is not very keen on hiring programmers for individual projects, to work on people's individual projects. But because RedCap is so easy, I can usually show the, the users how to do something on their own, um, even with API stuff. Like, it's not as intimidating as you may think because RedCap has actually been set up so great that it will write some of the code for you that you need in order to create an API connection um, to another application. So, yeah, you might not feel that you're a programmer, but I promise you 90% of what you think you can't do, you will be able to do yourself in RedCap, which is quite good. So we've got this group of admins, so if you're really stuck, if you get stuck on doing it on your own, you can always come to us and ask us for advice, but we don't have anyone that will do the programming for you. Well, no, listen, I do think it would be nice to get a get a for problem. I mean, the CRC is closed, right? But I mean, I, I, we would have happily paid you. We, through like 20k off the window at Jimby. I mean, it's just a like a food for thought, and actually also an ICTS team. I do think it would be it would be lovely, especially for I think for our projects was you can you it, in 15 minutes you get to a place in Red Cap where you can do things, which is phenomenal. Um, but we were just past that, like it, it was quite complicated, and I think we're all learning together a little bit, you know. But um, but there were things we we didn't feel comfortable on for a while. And we really had to kind of yeah. get our hands dirty and would have that internal and I think if, if it does go viral at UCT especially. Um, yeah, that, but, but then I challenge you, become that person who well, knows how to do it, you know, because <laughs> and and is really it's this is the self-learning thing. Yeah. Um, someone has yeah. to learn how to do it, someone has to be, be that person at each institution. We can't throw it back always to someone else to do it because there's just too much. 
No, but like, I actually 100% agree that it's it, like, if I could quit my job, that yeah, would be, you know, I mean, exactly. like, which is what you guys are all exactly. thinking. I, and I could also be become a person by, um, if I quit my job, you know, <laughs> and just do that. So, I mean, the more you learn, um, you know, the faculty might eventually decide to appoint someone, create a post, but at the moment we don't have enough to go on. Uh, like I said, we're only one year in, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe in five years, um, we'll have a so the way, the way we've solved, the, sorry, yeah. you were going to ask. No, that was, I think okay. you're going where I'm about, was going to ask so, you how so, other people. So this is not a unique uh, need, right? Yeah, okay. um, so what we've done at Vanderbilt is, you know, again, 95% of our projects just go straight red cap, you figure it out in the 15 minutes and you go. But, but those really complex ones, the ones that can't even be solved with the ninjas, the 201 <laughs> clinics, uh, we have another option. And that is, hey, if you've got money and you want to support a plug-in programmer, then, then we, have, we, we, can, we can work that. It's usually we, we will not deploy a plug-in programmer without a plug-in analyst. So you really have to be smart because you, 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 you kind of have to build an organizational model to do it. If you do, then you know you can add in enough funds to, to cover other things as well, right? So it works, but but it is so it does sort of take you into the custom development mode, and you do have to get comfortable with the fact that I'm going to hire and, and manage a, a farm of plug-in programmers. But so I'm really one of those end users that's got no idea about programming, and once you know I've landed up with a, a few little problems. For example, I've managed to lock myself out of my mobile app. And the other thing that I've back into, I love, unfortunately, I'm used to Excel spreadsheets being a doctor. So I mean, things like <laughs> me sorting my data into Excel spreadsheet, and then everything lands up in sort of one row and all the data in one cell. And obviously, I'd like it all in separate cells. So yeah. little things like that, what's the best way of finding the answer? Because then what I do is I go into Google and I type and I try and find, like, where do I find a way of fixing it myself? Like, I don't know if anyone um, would have an idea of how I could find the answers. There's a lot of stuff inside the red cap. So if you, for example, trying to import something and you go to data imports, there will be a little help or a little video that shows you the best way to do that. And then what, especially for data imports, they usually, um, you're able to download a template for your project of how your Excel spreadsheet should look, because you have to design the project first, <laughs> right? Yeah, you I mean, can't just come with a random my spreadsheet. Projects, like, my project's designed, I've entered all the data onto RedCap, and then I go export data, and then I get my, for example, patient ID, patient number, age, ethnicity, and it all goes into one cell with this one, two, three, okay. all in one You're cell. You're probably just and choosing the wrong export <laughs> options, um, but if I can recommend it, try using one of the stats packages, because then you get the Excel file out with another file. I suppose that what that I'm asking is how that. I find that, like, because that's a silly fact, that's one example, but what's a, the quickest way, because I go and watch the videos, but to find the answer to my, my one question I want to answer now, I might have to watch, you know, I've gone through all the videos and I've got to watch maybe a, two hours of video to find the answer, but I want to find the answer quickly so that I can keep going and I don't want to watch Well, that if you much. have a particular question, <laughs> the, this is how I do it. Excuse me if I'm not doing it the most efficient way, but I type my exact question into Google because yeah. the chances are you are not the first person asking that question. Chances are you are the 9,999th person asking that question. Um, and someone might have already posted an answer to that question on a forum. So I would go there first. <coughs> if you really can't get it, then email the admins um, at your institution. They might be able to help you. Um, but like with us, the admins are volunteering. Like nobody's employed to do recap, so it might take it might take half a day for us to reply to your email, whereas you would have got the answer quicker if you type it into Google and, and just see what other people have answered. Um, so you you, you might also try the FAQ. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. the FAQ yeah. also, yeah. also yeah. sometimes yeah. have yeah. answers, right? Yeah. So that would do the yeah. I would do the FAQ and then perhaps the video and then and, and then email Google. the answers, yeah. right? Or then Google, then email. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, can oh. you repeat that? Sorry, can you, no, can you just repeat I'm that? just saying, um, just, just remember when you have a problem, it may not be on the red cap side, it may be on the outside, so it might be an issue you might getting data into a spreadsheet rather than getting yeah, it Yeah, you might have an Excel problem rather than a red cap problem, for example. I often uh, run into a problem that the computer experts call a PEBCAC problem. <laughs> PEBCAC. Um, problem exists between chair and computer. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry, you had a question. Um, I know that there's a UCAP community, and it seems that everybody seems to be sharing the knowledge of this. Like, why isn't there a knowledge base available with these common questions? With, besides the FAQ that's available on the website as well, why is knowledge base that rules be made available for the community as a whole? Okay, so, you can, so I think that I should answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the FAQ, you know, is actually driven by a committee. So it's a living, breathing document, <coughs> and uh, you know, it's it's a committee of you know, really hardcore viral administrators that are listening to their users and they're doing their best to sort of pick out the things, the, the, the most important questions and, and putting answers to, the, to those. It's actually kind of nice because we have a method that allows them to do their work and, and as soon as they do their work, it's automatically on your red cap, uh, you know, here. Uh, you know, you don't have to wait for the next version. I, I think one thing that's been suggested suggested a number of times, and, and we keep stamping it down, is a global user email listserv. Uh, you know, why not do that? And, and the reason that we don't do that is because there's a lot of misinformation that could be shared there, right? Um, and, and we do good to, 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 you know, we've got 2,000 uh, sites. Each of those sites has four or five people or three people. You know, we've got now 6,000 people in, in the administrator-only version of this. It's hard enough for the consortium to listen in on that and sort of, sort of dispel any misinformation. When you take it to the end user level, it gets really, really noisy. And you also get this issue of, you know, one institution may be on a version, five versions back than, than the current. And I didn't talk about this, but, but in REDCap, we, don't, we never assume that all institutions are going to be comfortable with the same thing. So you have the API turned on. Institution over here may not have the API turned on. And then you get your users mad at you because, you, you know, hey, we don't have the API, and they do. Some people charge for it. You know, I don't know if you guys charge for it, uh, but, but some people within their own institution, they'll charge, you know, $100 an hour for consoles or $500 to, to, to spin up a single instance. And now you've really got users getting mad, right? Because so, so, so that's the reason we don't have a universal all users uh, listserv type thing. And, and you know, it's, it's imperfect, but, but the group really is trying their best to sort of keep up with the, the common type questions and throw them into that AQ. So that at least the, the admins of each instance are part of that bigger admin consortium group. So if you ask us, and we also don't know, that will get escalated. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Cool. Anything else? <coughs> well, UCT has, uh, has very kindly brought us uh, hors d'oeuvres, light lunch. What do we uh, call it? Yeah, platter. A platter. <laughs> Uh, and it is, I, I've noticed it has arrived as the second speaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so let's please um, have some refreshments and uh, let's just chat. I mean, yes. part of this uh, meeting purpose was to get to know who else is using it and, and share ideas. And I, I definitely so want to thank Anami for, for her speech. So thank you for thank having you. us.